In an effort to find some silver lining in this forced global introversion, we see that London and Italy have recently reported that they have seen a decrease in air pollution in recent weeks due to less cars driving on the road. This also means that our collective blood pressure will decrease due to not being stuck in traffic all morning and all evening and whenever we decide to go to Atlanta or Los Angeles or D.C. or Bangalore or any of the thousand other cities that have been riddled with the plague of not knowing how to merge properly. I would wager to bet that the phrase, eat a bag of dicks, has virtually become non-existent in our vocabulary. Now this is probably making all of us realize that there are certain jobs that don't require someone to go into an office, sit in a gray, uninspired cubicle across from an overbearing colleague that insists that you must come over for dinner and watch their kid play the clarinet. It makes us realize that we really are and can be incredibly self-determining and self-disciplined. And this is probably where the powers that be are panicking because the illusions that they've put up to keep us droning on in a new evolved version of peonage and slavery are being shattered by a microscopic, spiky little organism. Now look, I wouldn't be surprised if the virus wasn't spread by some lonely, rich business person who wanted to eat something exotic knowing that their employees will never taste any of this in their lives. Now, with all this reduced air pollution, it is ironic that a virus that restricts your breathing is causing the air to be more breathable. Along with fresher and more organic air for us to breathe, there are some folks trying to come up with a vaccine using interesting technologies to help. In Australia, scientists are using a new method of high-intensity x-rays to map the virus to help find a vaccine a lot sooner. Now, this technology has been in use for quite some time in our scientific communities, but I think we should cut Australia a little slack, considering they almost literally burned off the map last year. I mean, even with this process, we're about a year away from a vaccine, so the world keeps trying its best to stave off this virus. As some of the world is enjoying some positive news to come out of these trying times, there are other folks who are trying to make it more trying. Uh, Jair Bolsonaro, the Senator Palpatine of Brazil, has referred to COVID-19 as the little flu and has refused to do anything about it because we're all going to die one day. This is really not the time for a lesson in authoritarian existentialism. This is the same attitude that the cocky asshole friend has right before they skydive off of an airplane without a parachute beer-bonging a Bud Light. Now look, if the splat doesn't kill them, choking on the Bud Light will, or really just drinking a Bud Light, that, that shit can't be good for you. Now, it is interesting that the idea is only used to excuse authoritarian acts of laziness rather than progress, right? These leaders will never use this excuse to do the right thing. They never say, well, we're all going to die one day, so might as well bail out the middle class with a few trillion dollars, give universal health care and a moratorium on uh, debt and rent and mortgages. I mean, if we're all going to die, why die worrying about bills? Let's, let's die have you know, let's die having some fun and a craft beer made in your best friend's garage. Let's die feeling stimulated on life. Bolsonaro's ignorant statements about the virus really does seem like he's trying to out machismo Trump. These chest-thumping, hyper-masculine leaders are playing the worst game of chicken I've ever heard of. Okay, no one double-dared you to act like a teenager at the helm of a global pandemic. Meanwhile, all the other countries that didn't peak in high school are coming up with a plan to help humanity and the middle class. Oppositional figures and intellectuals have come out against Jair Bolsonaro to say that he won't destroy Brazil. In a piece penned by the Brazilian newspaper Folha de Sao Paulo, I hope I didn't butcher that too much, they said that he was the greatest obstacle to urgent decisions being taken to reduce the spread of the infection. 
We're basically three days away from Bolsonaro in a defiant effort to prove his balls are bigger than the brains of the scientists to just order folks to cough on each other. You know, they'll be fine. I mean, we're all going to die one day, so why not today, right? Look, I don't know what's worse. Republicans in America asking old people to die for the economy or Bolsonaro asking his citizens to die for his ball size. Now that... Now... This has brought out community efforts to implement quarantine measures, but not in a way that you might think. Gangs in Brazil are coming out to enact cur curfews and ensure people socially distance from each other. They are saying if people don't stay indoors, they'll have to show these folks how to respect each other. I'm not sure if this is a better alternative to Bolsonaro. We, we just tip the scales to the complete opposite direction. Okay, these gangs are operating on the same philosophies as an abusive parent. Okay, I beat you because I love you. The pain you feel is my love burning through the bruises. And if you look closely, one of the bruises does look like a heart. As Brazil is battling with extremes and possible renegade scientists, Sweden has a completely different approach to this pandemic. Instead of a total lockdown, they approach the situation with logic and pragmatism and their intellect instead of panic and hoarding toilet paper like it was going to be the currency of the future. Look, if it was going to be the currency of the future, the banking industry would have seized all the toilet paper and asked you to fill out some forms and put your house up as collateral to take a shit. As Sweden decided not to shut everything down and collapse their economy without a plan to take care of its people. As 90% of the airline industry came to a halt, they retrained re re and reallocated their staffs to help doctors and nurses with administrative work and equipment sterilization since they figured that this pandemic would overwhelm the medical system. Right, which proves Republicans and stubborn blue collared workers wrong when they say that they can be retrained for better jobs than working in a coal mine or a dangerous factory that will one day be run by the cold, steely hands of robots. Now, Sweden also restricted gatherings of 500 plus people, and in bars and restaurants operate on a table service basis, which means that small businesses haven't been affected as negatively as they have been in the states. Uh, or countries that are on a full lockdown. They did close universities, but kept schools open for kids under the age of 16. Their thought is that the younger kids need structure and a formal education, while the older kids can figure out how to manage their time a lot better on their own. This means that Sweden, in Sweden, there, there aren't parents who have gone completely comatose while watching Frozen and Moana for the millionth time. I mean, there are parents in America that have PTSD thanks to Disney and Kirsten Bell's lovely, lovely singing voice. They also figured that people can go out and live their lives as they would, and if they get sick, they should quarantine themselves and make sure that they don't come into close contact with the elderly or the immunocompromised. Essentially, Sweden is practicing the idea of herd immunity. Now, one would think that this would mean a higher risk factor for the population, but in reality, Sweden's numbers are no different than Norway's, who, who is on a complete lockdown. They're both at about 3,000 cases, some, somewhere around 3,000 cases that are testing positive for the virus. And Norway is less populated than Sweden, so that means, percentage-wise, Norway has a higher density of people that have tested positive for the virus through a lockdown. This pandemic has the potential to change humanity for the better. We can learn important lessons from each other on a global scale. If we're open to intellect, reason, and stoicism instead of panic and hubris, we can probably create a society that is more nurturing and compassionate. We can come out of this without gang rule and renegade scientists and over-sheltered humans, but rather a more intellectually evolved being that is a true breath of fresh air for this planet. 
Uh, right now, I don't have any live stand-up comedy shows to tell you guys about because uh, we are in a strange little situation, and I hope everybody is staying safe. I hope everybody is uh, keeping their mental health in check, uh, making sure that they're checking in on uh, their their friends and their loved ones and each other, and making sure that everybody is being good to each other because we all uh, we all need to be good to each other right now. Um, but, uh, one of the things that I have been working around in my head is, uh, the idea of doing a Zoom live comedy show. Zoom is an app that they use for, like, meetings and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, I was talking to my friend Ron Placone, uh, who, along with Graham Elwood, has, uh, done a couple of these Zoom shows. Um, and, you know, for, for me, it would be a solo show. Uh, so I am going to try to test that out. Uh, I'm going to try to pick a date to run a test and the test will be free. It will be limited to like 10 people and it'll be a short test show, maybe like 15 to 30 minutes um, of your time. And it'll basically be me running some material, uh, trying a, a short version of the show and uh, and then doing a quick Q&A session and getting some feedback about what everybody thought about it. Um, and, and going about it that way. So there'll probably be a brown paper tickets link. Um, and then eventually, uh, to, you know, a, a ticket link will get set up for the actual show itself. Once I kind of figure out what are some of the minor little kinks that need to be sorted out from it. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, I am doing daily videos. I'm doing videos every day, except for Thursdays. Thursday, I'm going to try to concentrate my efforts on this podcast and on writing. Uh, but all of that content is going to be available on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. And you can check out all of my videos there. You can check out all of my uh, comedy albums there. Uh, it'll take you to uh, any of the streaming sites that you n normally stream your, your albums and your musics from. Um, and, uh, and, and on my website, you can also find uh, different ways to become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation if you can. We're all kind of stuck in a, in a difficult time. So if, if you have the ability to and uh, you, you feel inspired or moved to, to become a sustaining member or to make a one-time donation, you can do so on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, that has uh, various different ways you can become a sustaining member, various different ways you can make a one-time donation from Patreon to PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, uh, and becoming a sustaining member over on the Bandcamp page, which gives you access to unreleased storytelling and stand-up comedy content, stuff that didn't wind up on albums, very, very early versions uh, of, of the shows, uh, you know, new material nights, developmental stage type stuff. Um, so, uh, nights where I didn't even do material. I just kind of riffed and talked to the audience and, and came up with stuff on the spot, stuff that you normally wouldn't hear. So once again, that's ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to everybody that's already become a sustaining member and donated. 